So right now we'll be solving this very problem here. Now remember we said something. If you're finding the inverse Laplace transform, we'll always try to narrow it down and simplify the expression to have this very look-alike. Let me let's, let me just say look-alike. So we try our best to make sure that these very guys are what we have. But if you are trying to solve this type of problem, you will notice that none of this, none of this looks like this guy. Look at here, we have a over s, 1 over s minus a. There is no part that has three items at the denominator. It doesn't exist. Look at it. This is just two, two items, two items, two items. It doesn't really exist. So what do we do? We use partial fraction. So, because if we can simplify this expression, if we can break it down, we're going to have an answer. Now look at this. This should be equal to, um, this should be equal to the inverse Laplace transform of 5s plus 1 divided by, now ask yourself, this denominator here, s squared minus s minus 12, can we factorize it? Is it possible? Because that's the first thing you look at in partial fraction. The denominators actually tell you how many individual fractions are going to have. So right now, look at s squared minus x minus 12. What can we resolve from this? This is going to be s minus 4 brackets s plus 3. That's what we're going to have. Why is it like that? Because there's a 1 here. What we do times to give you minus 12? Add the same thing, you get minus 1. The numbers are what? Minus 4 and what? 3. So that was how I got that very guy. You know, we're big boys and big girls, so we can easily factorize. Now, 5s plus 1 divided by x minus 4, bracket bracket s plus 3. This guy which we are seeing right now, we can break this into partial fraction. Now, how many fractions am I going to have? 2. Because these denominators are what? Linear denominators. These denominators are what? Linear denominators. So I'm going to say 5s plus 1 divided by s minus 4, bracket bracket s plus 3. Is going to be equal to now what's the first um, factor here we have s minus 4 plus what's the second factor here s plus 3 because if you look at it this way what will be the lcm here the lcm here will still be the same thing on this other side so right now we know what the denominators are the denominators are always very sure it is the numerators that are the problems so right now can i come here and put a and b simply because i don't know what a and b is going to be so this is what I will do. This will become 5s plus 1 divided by s minus 4 bracket s plus 3 equal, what is the SCM here? s minus 4 bracket bracket s plus 3. Everything here divided by s minus 4 will be left s plus 3. Then times it with a, this is a bracket s plus 3. Then plus everything here divided with s plus 3 will be remaining s minus 4 times it with b this b bracket s minus 4. So that's what I have. Now at this point, if you look at this carefully, the denominators are the same. Denominators are the same. So what do I do next? I'm going to say the numerators are also going to be what's the same. So that means 5s plus 1 is equal a bracket s plus 3 plus b bracket s minus 4. Now look at this expression carefully. We are actually finding two things, a and b, but we just have one equation, logically, one equation. Please take note, you can even find three things when using this. What do we simply do? People solve differently. But see what I always love to do. If I can make this part where a is existing to be zero, I can find b. Or if I can make this part where b is existing to be zero, I can find what? a. So let me start with making a equal to zero. So this s plus three here, this s plus three here, what do you think s would have to be for everything here to be zero? S has to be minus three. So I will say let s be equal to what? Minus three. See what will happen. This will become five brackets minus three plus one equal a bracket minus three plus three plus b bracket minus three minus four. Now this is 5 times minus 3 is minus 15 plus 1 equal a bracket minus 3 plus 3, 0. Then plus b bracket minus 3 minus 4 minus 7. 
Minus 15 plus 1 will give us minus 14. Equal a times 0 is 0. Then plus b times minus 7 is minus 7b. So this is minus 14 equal minus 7b. Can I divide both sides by minus 7? Yes. What would b become? b is equal to what? 2. So you keep this answer separately. b is equal to what? So we'll solve for b. Now what's the next thing we're going to solve for? a. To solve for a, you must make the b side to be what? 0. Now this is x minus 4 here. What would s have to be for everything here to become 0? s would have to be what? 4. Because 4 minus 4 will give us 0. So the next thing I'll say is let s be equal to 4. Our expression is 5s plus 1 equal a bracket s plus 3 plus b bracket s minus 4. So this is 5 bracket s is 4 plus 1 equal a bracket this is 4 plus 3 plus b bracket 4 minus 4. 5 times 4 is 20 plus 1 equal a bracket 4 plus 3 is 7 plus b bracket 4 minus 4 0. 20 plus 1, 21, equals 7 times a, 7a. This times 0 will give you 0. How do I get my a? Divide both sides by what? 7. So a is equal to what? 3. So at this part, we have gotten our a and what? b. So right now, let us come back to this very expression. 5s plus 1 all over s minus 4, bracket s plus 3, is equal, they said a over s minus 4. So what is your a? a is 3. So this is 3 over s minus 4 plus, they said b, the next one, b is what? 2. So this is 2 over s plus 3. What you've just done, you have split this whole fraction into simpler parts. So this is what we call partial fraction. So you are done with this part. Let us go back to our question. The question says, what is the inverse Laplace transform of everything here? So what would this become? This would become the inverse Laplace transform of what expression do we then have finally? Our expression is finally 3 over s minus 4 plus 2 all over s plus what? 3. So this is what we have. Now remember that Laplace transform is a linear function. So that means I can distribute and spread the inverse Laplace transform across to this and this. So this is the inverse Laplace transform of 3 over s minus 4 plus the inverse Laplace transform of 2 over s plus 3. Okay, so right now, solving this will be very simple. Very, very simple. So we just need one or two lines. It depends on you though. We just need one or two lines to get our final result. Now see, the top has a constant. The s here is raised to the power of 1. Which of these transforms do you think suits that very expression? The top is a constant. The bottom has s to the power of 1. This is the expression that suits it. Because this is 1 over s minus a. So what does that mean? That means I'll be treating this very 3 as a constant. So this is actually 3, you can say this is 3 times 1, it doesn't change anything, and this is 2 times 1. So what will be the final answer of this? I'm going to say 3 exponential 40 plus, on this part, this is 2 exponential minus 3t. This is the final solution to the question. So this is the final answer to this very question. Look at it. Let me just explain this part again. I said you have 2 over s plus 3. Look at this very guy. This is the guy that shoots it. Since we have s plus 3, I remember that the definition says what? Minus. So if you bring this plus 3, this will become what? Minus. So you are going to put it here. So this is the final answer to the question. If you have s minus 4, your a is what? 4. But since this was plus 3, it means this a here has a negative power. So this is the final answer to that very question. Thank you very much for watching this very video.